Same thing, I went to Angie's restaurant. I got somebody and then I got the whole thing. <coughs> Good morning. Welcome to the parish community of St. Francis of Assisi. <coughs> As we begin our celebration, let us praise God singing hymn number 310 in the Baptist hymnal. I heard the voice of Jesus say, number 310 in the Baptist hymnal, please stand. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pause in the presence of our Lord and one another, call to mind our sins, and ask God's forgiveness. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you came to announce the good news of salvation to the poor. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners to bring us forgiveness. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you came to bring us new and everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May our loving God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, help us once again to be open to your spirit as we share our faith in this Eucharist. May this Eucharist help us to grow in holiness and in faith. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm responses in Breaking Bread, number 753.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may receive mercy. For God delivered all in disobedience that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew. Lord, Jesus withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. It happened that a Canaanite woman living in that locality presented herself crying out to Jesus, Lord, son of David, have pity on me. My daughter is terribly troubled by a demon. Jesus gave her no response. His disciples came up and began to entreat Jesus. Get rid of her. She keeps shouting after us. My mission is only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Jesus replied. She came forward and then did a homage with a plea of help me, Lord. But Jesus answered, it is not right to take the food of the sons and daughters and throw it to the dogs. Please, Lord, she insisted, even the dogs eat the leavings that fall from the master's table. Jesus then said in reply, woman, you have great faith. Your wish will come to pass. That very moment, her daughter got better. The Gospel of the Lord. The short encounter between the Canaanite woman and Jesus is very significant. It says a lot, even though it's a short encounter. Anybody here ever been possessed by a demon? My husband says so. <laughs> My sisters used to call me a little devil. Huh? But you know, what, what's a demon? A demon is somebody that controls your life, that you can't do anything because the demon it has you. The demon won't let you go. You can't do what you want. You can't be a free person. Still no demons in the house, huh? 
But suppose I substituted the word demon for addiction. How many addicted people do we have? Everybody. Everybody's addicted in one way or another. And for the sake of the gospel, I'll call it a demon. Because when we're controlled by our addictions, we have no say, really. You know? We're not free to be ourselves. We're not free to grow. We're not free to have our own ideas. The demon, the addiction, takes control of our life and leads us in the direction that perhaps we don't want to go. And as long as you and I recognize that we do have a demon in our life, at least one, at least one demon, we're able to deal with it a little bit better if we're not aware or we don't admit that we have that demon. So people who have de demons like you and I perhaps seek help. We go to groups, you know, AA groups or drug groups, whatever. There's a lot of groups out there that are good to help us deal with the addictions and demons that you and I have so that we won't be controlled. This woman in today's gospel, can you imagine? It's a little village probably where she lived and her daughter had this possession disturbing not only the family, but probably the neighbors. And the neighbors were saying to the woman, get, get your daughter out of here, you know? She's molesting us, or she's annoying us. Get her out. So the poor woman not only had to deal with her daughter who was going through this possession, but had to deal with the neighbors who were criticizing her daughter. The woman must have been at her wit's end, huh? She didn't have the capacity, like you and I oftentimes, to deal with the problem that she was facing. But did she quit? No. She reached out. Her last hope, her back was to the wall. And she reached out to this man called Jesus, who probably had a good reputation in the area for healing people. She was not Jewish. Huh? And Jesus told her that, you know, you're not Jewish. I don't know whether I can help you or not, because my work is only for the house of, the, of Israel, only for Jewish people. It seems uh, that Jesus had to learn to open himself up to different cultures. Jesus had to learn to open himself up to people who didn't share his faith. Jesus had to let go, in other words, of a lot of his ideas, a lot of the ways that he lived in order to open himself up to those who were suffering. It comes to us now, huh? What is it that you hang on to so much that you can't let go of, so that you cannot respond to the needs of people who are in need? Maybe it's the prejudices that we have against race and cultures, sexual orientation, religion, who knows? What are those things in your life that you hold on to, you won't let go of? And when we don't let go of those things that we hold tightly in our mind and in our heart, we can't respond to people in need. We can't help the person who is struggling because we're thinking about our own life, our own way of doing things, is much better than your way. And when we have that attitude, which I think all of us have, people suffer. Look at the migrants. I've heard a lot of stories, a lot of negative things. Sure, there are practical difficulties, but the idea of opening our doors to people who are struggling isn't that Christian-like or human-like? Where are other areas in our life, where are other areas in our life do we think we got the better idea and you're, the other person is wrong? That's what we got to work on. That's what I think is happening in today's gospel message. That Jesus was able to let go 
and open his heart to this Canaanite woman, even though Jesus says, you know, my uh, mission is only to the lost people of Israel. But Jesus, as Luke tells us, had to grow in holiness and faith before God and other people. And don't we have to do the same? So where is it? Dealing with the demons in our life. How do we do that? How do we reach out in order to not be controlled by something else in our life? And where is it that we have to let go of in order to help people out who are struggling, even though it might dirty our hands? Or we weren't brought up that way. I've heard that story a lot. Well, you can change. And we have to change in order to respond to the gospel message of openness. First reading, huh? God's house for all people. All people. Somehow that was lost over time. And the same holds true today. We have to open our doors, open our hearts, open our lives to others. If we can do that in the parish where we are, hopefully our minds can expand to other people who are struggling. You know, it's easy in times of disaster to give to people who are suffering, isn't it? You know, we give online and we give here and there. And we don't say, you know, what's your religion? No, you're suffering like in Maui. Who cares whether they're Jewish or Catholic or Italian or Irish? They're hurting people. We got to have that same attitude when it comes to our faith, when it comes to many of the ideas that we hold too tightly in our hand we can loosen up and open our hearts, that's how we fulfill today's gospel message. We don't look at a person's religion, we look into their hearts. We look into their lives. We try to heal the suffering in their lives as best that we can. That's how we learn, that's how we grow, that's how we develop. That's what Jesus did when he was on earth. And we could see it throughout the Gospels. So, you know, we always say uh, God can't go anywhere because he's everywhere. That means he's everywhere. in people that we don't like. And people we don't understand. And people that we're afraid of. And our not worst enemy, God is present. How you deal with it, you know, it's up to you. But I think if we take some lessons from today's Gospel, we can open ourselves up slowly to a new way of looking at life, a new way of looking at people. Please stand and let us profess our faith in our God. I believe in one God, Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, the Lord, and the Lord, and the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was satisfied by him, and was there, he descended to hell, though the grave rose again, and he ascended to heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God, and Mary, the conquered judge of living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, many saints, forgiveness of sin, resurrection of the body, and life. And now let us present our needs, our petitions before the Lord. for compassion within Christians to stand and speak for refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the people of Hawaii and all who are experiencing the difficult effects of climate change, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
for a spirit of welcome to the foreigners and aliens among us, so as to end the fears engendered by the stranger. Let us pray to the Lord. For Christians and Jews to grow in mutual respect of each other and raise a common voice against the violence of anti-Semitism. Let us pray to the Lord. For courage and strength within our all parents whose children are sick and suffering from addictions. Let us pray to the Lord. For wisdom and insight among the electors as the Episcopal Diocese of Albany prepares to select a new bishop. Let us pray to the Lord. For hope for all who mourn and eternal life for all our dead in Christ, including Gloria M. Johnson, Francis R. Johnson, Francis J. Johnson, and Lee Mooney. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people and situations that we hold deep in our hearts and bring to this holy table. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God once again with confidence and trust, we have placed our needs before you and those that we hold in our heart. And we ask you, if it is your will, to grant them through Christ our Lord. As we prepare the Lord's table, let us join in singing hymn number 222 in the Baptist hymnal. We've come this far by faith. Number 222. together that our offerings may be acceptable to our loving God. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord God, may these gifts of bread and wine continue to help us in our day-to-day lives to grow in holiness and understanding of one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. 
And so with the angels and all the saints, we proclaim your glory as with one voice we acclaim. <clears throat> sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And now in song, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her husband Joseph, with the apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
let us pray together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Chuck, body of Christ. Amen, Joe. Good morning. Thank you. Brandon, body of Christ. Body of Christ, Georgiana. Body of Christ, Georgiana. Body of Christ, body of Christ Ralph. Body of Christ, Mike. Body of Christ, Elsa. Body of Christ. 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 Fred. Body of Christ. Matthew. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Nancy. Precious Lord. Oh, Lord, we 
And let us pray. Compassionate God, once again, we are very grateful for having had the opportunity of sharing our faith in this Eucharist. May what we experienced this morning live on throughout the week. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Announcements. Did, did you know that? Yeah, Millie. Millie, you want to come up to the microphone so everybody can hear you? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> right here. This is important. I know. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I know y'all could have heard me anyways, but anyways. Lee Mooney's information regarding her is tonight from 4 to 7 at W.J.A. Lyons Funeral Home, 1700 Washington Avenue in Rensselaer, New York. Tomorrow, I mean Monday, which is tomorrow, sorry, we're going to have her funeral here at the church at 11 o'clock. So please come out and support the family. Thank you. Thanks, Millie. Oh, is that <laughs> Yes. We had oh. ah. <laughs> Yes. Oh boy. Hey guys. Today is uh, my son's Connor and Liam's birthday. Oh. Now, we are, are you all aware that Bishop Hubbard passed away yesterday? Yes. Yeah. They haven't uh, come up with the plans yet as far as his, his funeral goes. And the Lord be with you. With you may our loving God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks. 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 Let us go forth singing hymn number 10 in the Baptist hymnal. Oh, how I love Jesus. Number 10 in the Baptist hymnal.